So welcome back all this is Daz from Monero Techniques. So up this week we're doing another video on ESP232 cameras and how I'm using them on my hidden staging yard. Also we're going to look at doing some nicely 3D printed enclosures for them to finish off the project nicely. So without further ado, enough waffle, let's get started. So let's do a little bit of, bit of a deep dive into this little guy. So I buy mine predominantly out of, through via, via AliExpress I should say, on the website. So $5.52, sometimes they're a little bit cheaper than that depending on when you go in there. So um, similar type of money, $4.89 uh, for shipping. So cheap, cheap little option compared uh, for what they're actually capable of doing. So some of the features of this little guy is, as I said, it's all Wi-Fi based. So we're looking at the normal Wi-Fi protocols, which is the 802.11 BGNN Wi-Fi. It's got a 520S RAM and it supports, as we said, the camera I'm using, the OV2640, but also you can use the OV7670 cameras. Also, it's got um, an external adapter for an external Wi-Fi aerial, so that's that little guy there. So I've yet to use an external aerial. I'm finding it's quite, the, the testing I'm doing so far, and I've got like two cameras running. It's uh, quite complimentary without having to run the, the extra Wi-Fi antenna. So you can see that the, the SP32 does not have a USB connector. So what you're gonna to have to look at getting is an FDI, F, FTDI, I should say, programmer. So that's so we can upload the code through the UOI and the UOT pins, which are the serial pins. So I'll bring one of those quickly up for you as well. So that's that little guy there. So I, as I said, I buy probably my stuff through AliExpress. I'm not an affiliate AliExpress, but I will put some links to some Amazon down below. With. So you don't need to buy one of these for each individual camera. You just need to buy this so you can flash the drive. I will show a way of just hard hard wiring the power into, into the SP32 later on in the video. So the pins we're gonna look at using, um, I'm using, the example I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna be using the five volt. Um, you'll notice this is the 3.3. That's the one I initially tried around with. It's just a matter of changing that around uh, to the five volt version, which is over on this side. So if, to save confusion, we'll just we'll line up with the 3.3. Uh, so the pins we're looking at are the serial pins, which is the GPI one and three, which are these little guys here. So the UOR goes to the TX, and the UOT goes to the RX, and the ground to the ground. And as spoken of before, now of note, so Foey, so this little guy knows that it's in flash mode, you need to bring the GPI zero pin, which is this one here, the third one down on the right hand side. We need to connect that to a ground. So the reason that is, is so the flash drive knows that we're in flash mode and we can upload sketches to it. PCB Way offers a variety of services ranging from PCB production and assembly to 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet fabrication and injection molding in a variety of materials. If you do not have the correct tools for the job, you can quickly upload your Gerber file for a PCB and press enter and get a quote in no time at all. This makes PCB Way a good option for your projects. All right, so what we'll quickly look at here is the, the Arduino sketch for it. So, so there's not much you really need to change here uh, for this. So it's obviously different pages or books that open up here, one of a better phrase. We don't need to change any of those. That's just all part of it. So these cameras work. So there's only a few things we need to change. So the first one is from line number nine is select the camera model. So the camera model, the ESP I'm using is the camera model Rover kit. So all you need to do is it'll, the sketch will look like that. So we'll have two forward slashes in it. And it's just a matter of getting rid of those and away you go. So the next thing we need to look at, we're going down to lines 18 and 19. This is where we put our SSID or to talk to our um, wireless internet in our train sheds, basements, or whatever. So however you access your internet in your environment, in your train area or other areas, this is where you put that. So my router and internet has either 2G or 5G operations, or you might even have 6G. 
um, on some of them now. My understanding is put in the description uh, the comments below, but I think these only will work on 2G, which is a little bit slower, a bit more stable internet uh, for this type of thing anyway. So once we do that, we go up to the top here. Uh, I'm just going to go into straight into compiling the sketch now. These little guys got a little button on the back and I'll bring that up on the screen very shortly. You just need to hold that down just for a second or so and that puts it into flashing mode. Just a few moments later. Okay, so at this point in time, as you can see down the bottom here, the sketch is uploaded, but it's saying ha, trying to reset the RTS pins. So the RTS pins, I bring this picture back up, are the two little pins you link together to put it in programming mode. So, so we've got that so now what we can look at is we go up to the top right hand corner here we're still in screen yes and we've got what we call the serial monitor so this is how we can communicate and just just to make sure everything's working properly so now you can see that we're wi-fi connected and the the ip address is 10.0.0.225 so we bring up an internet browser type in our ip address and it will bring up the interface. So now you know you've got the the, the camera is working correctly. Um, it'll bring up this interface. So we're now actually in my layout room proper. So this footage is looking down my lower Biltoma staging, which is sort of at a lot underneath the the upper Biltoma staging. So what do I look at doing? So the first thing I always look at changing is the the resolution of the video. So I put that at what's on the screen there, so the 1280 by 1024. So you can go higher, but what I'm finding is the higher you go, uses more bandwidth, and the, the, the picture actually degrades, to be quite honest with you. So that's sort of a nice, we're not going to get full HD video here. So I don't really touch a lot of these other parameters. So I might play around with some of the brightness and the contrast and saturation, just depending on where the camera is positioned. So just quickly, um, this is a just a quick snipping of the, the interface. Now, the other one that I might, I didn't actually take any footage of this, but now, now I'm in the editing suite, probably is is this V-flip. So what the, vert the V-flip is, like, is a vertical flip. So if you actually toggle that, it flips the camera around. So that's actually quite handy depending on the orientation that you're putting the camera, say, like in a camera car, or you physically, because of room, you have to put the camera up or the camera upside down. So the settings on the screen here is what is what I've found is the best for this location. As I said, I don't change them too much from location to location, even if it's above the board with more light. It just seems to be the uh, my go-to settings for this little camera. So All right, so the footage that you're seeing there is from my layout proper. So previously on the previous video, what I used, I used a program called Streamlabs OBS to bring screenshots of all the the camera feeds in now so what i'm going to look at doing i didn't that, that's quite laborious because you, you couldn't actually save it as a template you had to do it each time bring up a web browser snip the web browser to where exactly where the the footage was on the screen and then bring that into this little program so i've tried to go so i went down another line and i'll show you what i've come up with. right so this is the main interface for the application on the android tablet now you can see i've had started play around with some of the ip addresses or some of the cameras play around with some of the cameras that I've got so it's just a matter of going into your camera and then you obviously there's various very options so the one we're going to look at I'll just go into for the sake of brevity and make this process go a little bit quicker we're just going to go into the, a camera that I've already done so you come in at the top here let me zoom that in a little bit you come into the top here and you can name it anything you want so I've just got a camera 3 then point sixty. So that's just for testing purposes. So the point 60 is because of the, the IP address, so I know which one it is, or uh, well, the N2 digits anyway. A generic URL camera, the model, and then it asks for the URL. So as when we showed you up on the um, the Arduino screen, um, as we showed you when um, we bought the IP address up for the individual camera on the, the serial monitor within the Arduino ID, IDE um, interface. That's where you get that, that number from. So now every computer is going to be different, so I won't go into how you go about doing this, but um, most times it's the, 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 uh, the colon there, you're either going to be 80 
or 81 and then forward slash stream so that's obviously very important so it tells you which 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 port that's coming in on um, within your computer there's a myriad of ways you can go and check that out I'll um, try to find some links below how you might do that but most cases I've been getting them all my cameras up on either port 80 or 81 then it's just a matter of going in and testing and you'll see if you've got your um, your settings all correct it comes back pretty quick if you've if you've got something incorrect up here so we're coming in on um, HTTP which is um, TTP which is hypertext transfer protocol I actually had to look that up um, so the other one you, you might uh, HTTPS which is more secure is my understanding with um, depending on what system you're using this I'm, I'm using Microsoft so um, yeah, so it'll come in on using the connection that, that's saying it's not going to be secure so obviously people can hack in hack into it if they've got your IP addresses and the like and can get into your router but this is not what this video is about it's more about just getting these basic system up and running um, for our model train so we can monitor some areas that, uh, that might be a little bit hard to by the naked eye so from that you're just pushing save on it then you're going right back and then as you can see I'm having trouble with this one camera 45 it keeps dropping in and out but um, so these other two there and there they're obviously very very close up so they're the cameras just off screen there um, I'll show you those uh, very very shortly but that's pretty well the interface in short so the last part of this video what I also looked at doing previously in my video I did not have all I did was I mounted, I just mounted the ESPs just as they were there. I soldered the two wires, the the five volt and also the ground here. And then I just used a bit of blue tack and I sort of held them in place on some props. So I thought now that I've got my filament printer, I would do a few different, few different other. Looked at online to see what sort of enclosures are out there. So there, there is a myriad of enclosures so you can just see I got that the, the lens in held in there with a little bit of blue tack. So this is actually designed. There's a a board that you can actually get that so you can plug in a, a micro USB. Is my understanding. I don't have any of those, and I don't see the need for those when I can just solder two wires to it from my five volt bus that I've got running around my layout for various Arduino projects. So obviously you need to bring that forward. It's got the the application for when the LED needs to come on, which you you can have it on all the time um, through the through the sketch if that's what you want to do. Um, the only trouble with maybe this, let me just get it out, is probably on larger rooms. I don't know if you can see. I'll do the best I can to get this in focus. Just there is a. A little port for an external antenna now I haven't played with any of those antennas but I think I might get some because I've had a few issues with dropping out here and there um, from time to time with this this project so that doesn't actually have anything like that but I suppose what you could probably do so this is just the board here just roughly put it on you could probably still either that drill a hole in the top here or try to run it out out through here as you're putting it together. Um, the other option that I've got is something like this. Let me just quickly put it together. This comes with a little mount, so you can have it on the side of a wall or something, or having it flat on, you know, maybe in a, a hidden yard or something. Have it on the on the on your sub road bed and just just that way. The only issue with this one is doesn't quite line up here so I have to go into the sketch myself uh, sorry the the file and maybe into Tinkercad or or sketch up or something similar and just make either make that hole bigger or try to move it somehow um, not today's problem so there are a myriad of options out there um, various websites if you just type into your, your Google search something along the lines of um, ESP32 camera STL files so it's an STL type file and there's a myriad that come up so I'll, if I find any more between now and when I put this video together we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So 
that's the end of the video. So thanks for watching. So like always, I've got three questions. So number one is going to be, have you used something similar to this um, for your, you know, either remote ops so you, people can view into your layout to, to help out like dispatches or the like? Number two, if so, are you using different types of cameras? I know there's, um, there's Pi cameras out there that are probably a little bit more expensive but can be a little bit better in some regards as well. And number three, and number three, um, if there's any glaring errors or ways you think I can do this better, I have suffered a little bit of lag issue and I've got very quick um, internet at my, in my office and also into my train room. So if there's any other ways, I know you can use what they call web sockets or something similar and you're basically building your own architecture, or I suppose, um, within the, the soft world, soft, software world to bring these cameras into so you can have multi-cam viewing because that's the issue with them you can only bring it up one at a time so if you have it up on your your desktop like i showed you earlier with the ip address and you've got you've streamed on that you won't be able to bring it up on anything else so that's one of the, the pitfalls of it you can't have it in multiple multiple locations um, hence why i looked at the tablet option to, to be a bit more portable when I'm uh, running my, my operations, or I'll have these tablets just around the, the layout in various locations. So, so yeah, comment below if you've got any ways you can help out with this, that'd be fantastic. Um, like always, big shout out to my, my Patreons and Buy Me A Coffee fans out there. Every little bit helps, so please consider that. So obviously with them, um, if not that's fine just like subscribe hit that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming content so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time